Sukatu Meso. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple of observations in hearing uh, the excellent panelists, and uh, I liked uh, um, the presentations they made about the future of the city. Now, I think it occurs to me, uh, and I'm a writer, so my task is to communicate. It occurs to me that the eventual plans for what can save Mumbai uh, are known to most people. As in the Israeli-Palestinian dispute, which seems forever intractable, the eventual terms of a settlement are known to most people. We need things like a directly elected mayor and some kind of uh, reshifting of the role of the Port Trust. Uh, we need more public transport uh, to disperse some of the population across the harbor. The problem is in how to communicate this to the vast majority of the people that live in this city that don't speak our language, literally or figuratively. They have no voice in what we deliberate in rooms like this, but they do have the vote. And this is where all our plans or visions or hallucinations uh, come up against the reality of a population which in the slum areas votes at the rate of some 90% and a population in precincts like this in South Bombay, which stays aloof from politics on the ground. We don't vote, and by and large, we don't participate in the political process. And the difference between the world's two great democracies, India and the US, is that in India, the poor vote. So in order for any kind of improvement um, to be made viable, we need to communicate our plans to the majority of the people of this city and I don't see that being done. The second observation um, I'd like to make is that unless we fix the problems of the villages, we're not going to fix the problems of the cities. Rahul Mehrotra once said to me, we have a problem as planners in cities like Mumbai. The nicer we make this city, the more roads, the more buildings we build, the more public transport, the more the number of people that'll want to come and live here. So, Unless agriculture is made viable again uh, in the countryside, unless you can keep them down on the farm, I don't see long-term sustained solutions to the problems of cities like Mumbai. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Narinda Naya, Director of Bombay First. Thank you. For me personally, it's a great uh, matter of great satisfaction to participate in this conference here today organized by Urban Age to dealing with the city of Mumbai. Sanjay referred to a vision which was prepared four years ago, and I, from Bombay first, was particularly happy and in a way to be associated with preparation of that vision. It was actually four years ago when we said that the city was decaying, everybody realized a vision had to be prepared and a document which is prepared, which I think Andy showed on his slide uh, earlier on this. So what have we achieved in the last three or four years? I think one thing, matter of great satisfaction, there is a great awareness now with the NGOs, with the people, the citizens, that something needs to be done with the city. Media, if you open a newspaper every morning, there's a reference to what is happening in the city, city needs to be done. A public-private partnership has been created for the first time and to deal with the governance of the city. There is a public, you know, the citizen action group constituted by the government of Maharashtra, where 30 citizens of the city sit with the government uh, and the empowered committee would sit with the government to see how the city's various initiatives could be uh, monitored. We have launched a largest, I think, an urban renewal program. There's going to be investment of something like 50 to 60 billion dollars taking place in, in the city here in next 10 years. That, I think, is a very, very uh, important step. Now, what are the constraints? I think, very, what, I think the minister referred to that, the, you know, one, there has to be courage and there has to be boldness. And that, I think, is what <coughs> we require here. Our, our city development will not take place without the political leaders supporting it and they have to have courage and boldness. That, I think, is very, very important that we need. A vision, 
everybody, a lot of people talk about vision. Vision is very important. We need to have a vision. And we do have a vision for the city, which is Sanjay very uh, aptly point, pointed out, showed us what the vision is. And if all those things happen in the next 10 years, this, this will be a really a world-class, can be a world-class global city. Now, what are the constraints that we've got here? We have a land use. This, this, it's a port, it's a port city, it's, it's an island city, there's a land use. We talk about the port land, I will not get into a debate on that, that, that. but I think there could be a win-win situation for the port and the city. A lot, lot of uh, country, a lot of cities around the world, a lot, lot of countries, the ports were there, and they have given part of their land to the city. London is an example in itself. Where, so it doesn't brief, mean that the brief, port please. should close. Sorry. All right, then the transport, I've been referred to several people, now, that's true. We have neglected our transport. We are carrying on 21st century and the 19th century, 19th century transport structure that is built out there. Migration is a very big problem. You have two to 300,000 people coming into the city, living in slums, why the slums? So there it needs to be tackled. We need to find a way how we can stop that, how we can deal with that. One of the things the government policies, policies adopted a few years ago, if you tell, let it be known around the world, around the country, that if you come to Bombay, you'll get, if you live in Nepal, you'll have a place, you'll get a free housing, uh, so that doesn't, that's not going to help out. The other biggest thing is the, is the issue here is the planning. There has been no proper planning in the city for the, in, for the development of the city. So we need to have a proper planning authority, proper planning, a holistic plan like the London plan. Which is a great uh, end note to end on, I think. That, sorry? Thank you, Mr. Nair. I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt. All right. but, uh, that one that last point I'd like to say is because we're looking at an investment of $60 billion. We, we need to have a proper implementation <laughs> mechanism in place. <laughs> if that is not placed, our record of implementation has not been very good. So, Th thank one. you. Um, the last word was to have been with uh, Sheila Patel, but unfortunately she can't be with us, so Sunda Bura has stepped in at um, very short notice to have the last, and I'm sure, very brief word. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I just want to say one thing, that uh, I think the direction Mumbai will take will depend uh, crucially upon uh, whether we believe in participatory democracy or not. Because I think, uh, you know, what people have been referring to, how do you uh, involve the poor, how do you listen to the voices of the poor? Recently, for example, the government, for reasons unclear, has said that slum redevelopment projects do not need the consent of the people, uh, particularly certain types of large government-owned, uh, government-managed projects. So to us, this seems sort of profoundly undemocratic. How can you decide uh, what is good for the people without consulting them? So I think public debate, transparency, a kind of discourse model of democracy which <coughs> involve the poor. Uh, to us, uh, our organization which works with the urban poor, we feel that uh, this is really a key element. Thank you. Thank you for such. Um, <laughs> thank you for a ringing conclusion to this morning's conversation.